What's up, guys? All right, I'm doing an amazing tour with uh, Nick from Xway Advance. For some reason, he's standing on the other side of the camera, but that's okay. We're gonna get this entire tour. Can I say office on wheels? What is, like, I don't even know what to say what it would be. You're mic'd up, An, so. an off-road office? Off, ooh, I like ooh. off, the adventure. Yeah, an adventure office. I mean, office. look at the thing. It's true. I mean, he named it Bigfoot, for crying out loud. So, we're gonna get all that information from Nick Nelson himself, the owner of Xway Advance. Here we go! What up, Nick? Yo. How you doing, bud? I'm good, how are you? Good, we have a we have an audience with us today. See, you yeah. guys are gonna be around us, I'm gonna put you on freaking camera. Yeah. How do you like them apples? Do yeah, I just did. Nick, we're after hours at Exploration Vans. Mm -hmm. uh, I just did a pan around so we can show all the vans you got in your shop there. We got a lot of vans. Boom shakalaka. Two of which are uh, your spec and chill vans, right? Precisely, yep. Okay, so they're getting built right now, so yeah. I can't wait to show them off. Oh yeah. Uh, you get some really cool features coming into those, but that's we not do. what today's video is about. Today's video is about this boy. Precisely. What do we got going on? Tell me. Yeah, so this is a 2020 low roof 4x4 Sprinter. Um, a pretty uncommon thing to see, I feel like, is, is a low roof Sprinter without a pop top. So oh, that's is this an for important a client? Thing to yes, so this is for a client who is a consultant in New York City who basically drives down in the ocean, fishes the first half of the day, does some work, goes back out, fishes again. So the goal of this was really to create an effective environment that's very dynamic. He can take seats in and out, he can work, he can put his kayak in the rig. It's like a multi-tool, right? Yeah, but I mean, instead it, of... this is perfect. He said he's a consultant, so he works a lot on the road. Mm -hmm. I stepped into this and you, and I was like, dude, there's no bed. Yeah, he doesn't need and a bed. You were, and you were like, the client doesn't want one. No, exactly. Well, and that's the whole point is he's not planning on really traveling pretty far outside of New York City with it. And if he does, in the rare occasion he does, he'll get a room. Can we step on in and we're gonna get to the outside and the, on the way out, even mm -hmm. though you've done way more to the outside than I don't than I think most van builders have done. Yeah, that's our style. That's your style. That's yeah. exploration vans. Everyone. We go big. I'm gonna open up the passenger door right here because you yeah. got a fr you got a friend for us. Yeah, we do. What's up with this guy? Oh, that's that's Skelly. He's kind of product development crash test dummy. It's crash really just, test dummy. He's yeah, it's for testing ergonomics of the seats. We uh <laughs> we try to integrate the Shieldman um, orthopedic seats whenever we can into a project. It's, it's pretty rare for those really, really long distance drives to be able to have access to a second armrest. So it's, it's a really nice option because I think I have scoliosis from long drives only having one armrest. So I want to save you all the trouble. This is a low roof, you already said. So Correct. you and I are luckily shorter, but shorter, you, can't, right? you can't fully stand in here. It's not bad, yeah. It's not bad. No, it's reasonable. So the whole point of this project again was versatility. So we start at the foundation with a, um, a smart floor from AMF Bronze. So the smart floor, is literally glued down to the chassis of the van and comes from medicine. Basically, they would put these in ambulances and they'd be able to hook people to it on a gurney and know that they're fully safe. And so we've got his kayak holders right here so he can load up his ocean kayak into the rig, take it in and out as he needs to. He also has two showman seats that can be easily removed from the van when he's not kind of driving his two kids around. Two people in the front, two passengers here, and an ocean kayak simultaneously in a 144. What's the difference between an ocean kayak and like a river kayak? Apparently it's, they're much longer. Are they? Yeah, so, so this boat literally fits on its side in between these two seats and nearly kisses the rear doors. Oh, really? It's huge. It's okay. that green one that was out there. And so this guy's a kayaker, a fisherman, mm -hmm. uh, just a, an, a, an adventure enthusiast. Exactly, yeah. He's, he's definitely an outdoor enthusiast, would much rather be outside whenever he can. So we've really tried to, to work with him because I'm not a fisherman and so I've worked with him a lot to kind of get into his brain, see what his needs are. Things like these rod holders up high because his rods are really long. So we've got kind of two storage options for rods, kind of the long-term option where they'll hook up here, as well as short-term options outside the van, uh, the vehicle, or van, whatever, <laughs> which we'll show you, but basically it's just, they hook into it. They just right. pop right in when you're driving like down the beach from spot A to spot B, you can store them really quickly and keep moving. All right, so this might be the fanciest fisherman I know because yeah. uh, you did the build and it's mm -hmm. not a cheap build. You did, you went high no. end. You went exactly. high end. You went high end refrigerator. You went high end like mm -hmm. electrical system. So what is actually above you that that is like really taking this to another level? Yeah. So what we have up high is a 12 volt air conditioning unit from Nomadic Cooling. Typically, I'm using the Dometic units in my in my projects, but the reason why the Dometic doesn't work in this specific application is the Dometic kind of comes down lower than the ceiling. Yeah. And you'd be bopping your head on that all the time. And so the Nomadic fitting kind of right on top, we create a really flush look here, way less likely to bang your head on something, so but still really, really effective unit. So if he's doing work, like consulting work, but mm -hmm. he's also fishing at the same time or oh, whatever. He can crank this thing up and create a really comfortable environment. Summertime, baby, summertime mm -hmm. fisher, right? Exactly. And this can handle even, we're in winter right now, so this can mm -hmm. handle winter quite easily. Exactly. So so we've used uh, 3M Thinslet for the insulation for this build. We've got foam inside the smart floor 
thin slit in the walls, thin slit in the ceilings, and then we have just you know the tried and true diesel S bar right here under the passenger yeah, seat. It is. So it's not the most effective place to put it. We definitely lose a lot of efficacy in the operation of the unit by putting it up here versus kind of in the middle. That's where we have space. And and you're obviously going to listen to your client. Whatever the client wants, you're going to give them. I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to the client and I'm going to to do my best to give them the end result they want. If that means we have to kind of deviate a little bit of how we get there to give them the best end result, but you know, you come to someone with experience to help you get the best end result, not to just say yes to everything. Now, Exploration Vans is in the Northeast, the deep Northeast. It's true. We're in New Hampshire right yeah. now, and it's it's cold right now. It's yeah. you know five degrees it's outside. Single digits out today. Yeah. yeah, and it's snowing. It's beautiful. I love it. For those that are liking that kind of van life, because there are a lot of winter. Van lifers, you, mm -hmm. you you typically use one of my favorite heating systems. You're a certified installer for them. We're a preferred certified installer for Preferred. Van Tech. Look at that. Yep. Yeah. So so at this point, we've installed enough systems. I work with Van Light Tech very very closely to to help perfect their current systems and develop new product. And so it's it's my do my go to system in just about every build. Um, but in this case, you know, we didn't need it. This is 99% a summer use vehicle that will yep. be stored in the winter. This is not meant to be a four season rig, and it can be turned into one, but, but it was all about being realistic, you know, with, with the, the budget we had, the goals we had, and kind of allocating things properly. Like, why does he have these back seats? Why is this seat right here? Yeah. And you were like, um, dude, he's got kids, and he drives them around. Mm -hmm. So this is like his, one of his daily drivers. This, yeah, this will be one of his daily drivers. Um, you know, he's got two kids. Really, the goal when we were talking about the, the theme of the van, because that's something that's very important to me, is that each of these projects has you know, it has its own personality and I wanted to, you know, to realize that potential. He literally just said like, when I pick up my kids from high school, I want to have the coolest rig in the world when I roll up. This is pretty cool. And I, I think <laughs> I took it farther than what he was expecting. I don't think he knew this was possible. Has he seen it? Yes. Oh, okay. he loves it. Okay, oh, cool. I, I have video of him when he walked in and saw it for the first time and he was just, I think he just said the words like unreal. Like I was saying, you actually went with a very high-end refrigerator. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, the isotherm is really fridges. very common. These days it seems like Dometic, Isotherm, and Vitrofrigo are really the top three players in the industry for uh, direct current refrigerators. Draw style. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I love, love draw. Draw? Yeah. Where are you from, Ask? I got to do the north. Yeah, so, so I, I try to integrate the drawer style as often as I can just because it is omnidirectional, so you can open it just as easily from one side or the other, depending on where you are, versus the door where you're kind of leaning over awkwardly. You lose a little bit of interior storage space with the drawer style, but I think it's it's worth it. The cabinetry itself, we've used SeaTech manufacturing. So SeaTech is based out of Michigan and primarily came from the NASCAR industry. So they build... These things are beasts. Oh, they're incredible. Yeah, so I literally just, I call them up, I send them the CAD files, they make exactly what I want. And, and this is rare. This is rare for me to integrate this style of cabinetry. It's not something I preferred being a woodworker. You just cannot, for the same price and the same expediency, get something built. And so this is kind of, you know, our, our trail series, basically. The trail series is just, let's get you into a rig quick. Let's get you into it, you know, as cheap as possible to still get a perfect end result. And, and this is the, really the perfect way to get there. Not only that, they're both, those are bulletproof. I mean, those, oh, th these things are, they're meant for actually like, yeah like shops and like yeah, ambulances. Exactly, they're used day in, day out, you know, in the professional auto racing industry. Um, we bookended that with a, an African mahogany countertop. It's one of the nicest countertops in a, in a lower end van, like a... This is, for us, this is low end. Uh, yeah. This van for us is low end. Yeah, yeah, I mean this, I mean, listen, you're, you're building out other, the two other vans to the side that are over 200 grand. This is under that. Precisely. And, yep. and you went with a beautiful piece of wood. This was made for me by, by my friends next door. I actually have a uh, cabinet shop that moved in next door, uh, Simply Custom. Well, that, that helps out a lot. They're killer. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, like, I'm, you know, we're a, we're a small crew here, and so when I can farm something out and help them out, I'm really happy to do it. In exchange, I cut things for them on my CNC, so. Uh, and you have just a very simple Dometic, yeah. you know, sink. Nothing crazy. You open it up. I love you, it. You do the thing. You got water. No drama. Uh, before I get to one of the coolest features of this van, I'm going to step out the back just slightly. Mm -hmm. um, you, I, I know you from various places, but mm -hmm. one of the things that you are probably the most efficient at is your electrical system. Mm -hmm. uh, you love electrical. You're, I believe, one of few very certified marine electricians in this industry. Yeah. Coming from a history in emergency medicine and, and a previous life as a professional athlete where certification is so valued, there's really no, no standard for electrical in this industry. So recognizing a standard didn't exist, I adopted one from another industry, which is marine. So I was the first van builder in the country to earn his marine certification in hopes to kind of push other builders to do the same, mm. to kind of create a higher level of standard in the industry to give our clients kind of the product they deserve. Your builder should not have watched the same YouTube video to build your system 
that you watch to understand what your builder did. Nice. It's scary. That is scary. Yeah. And so if we can push each other to do better, everyone wins. Uh, that was a segue for me to have you open up your cabinet. Can I show your electrical? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so our, our electrical, we, we use a kind of a, a flavor fusion of Xantrax, Victron, and Lithionics. Lithionics is, you know, as many have probably referred to it, is the Rolls Royce of batteries. I think I... You coined that phrase. I coined it however somebody stole it from me recently. I want to put them on blast. It's okay. No, people people steal your phrases. They steal your ceilings. It happens. <laughs> um, but but I use Lithionics just because they're they're the most well known in the industry. They have you know their batteries being used in you know in, in research in transportation in the amusement park industry controlling rides and you know animatronics. So like they have a lot of experience. Key goal is always to keep things very accessible. So we've got our overcurrent protection in the that rear. Is a massively clean system. Got everything else kind of happening back here. Our inverter, the two batteries. So you use Zantrek as your inverter. Correct. And it's just funny because. You would think that everybody would go with like Victron everything, but you yeah. switched it up a little bit. Well, and, and it's kind of an interesting reason why. So the Victron inverters are fantastic. They're, they're really complicated. And so in their programming and in their use, it's very easy to kind of misprogram or misuse it um, because they have so many potential use functions. But truthfully, the reason why I went back to Xantrex from Victron, they can be mounted horizontally. Ooh. So in most of my builds, the electrical system is kind of in a lower bench in the mm -hmm. back of the project, and with a Victron inverter, it must be mounted vertically for airflow. But with the Xantrax, they can be mounted low. You so know, it's it, funny you say that. I'm actually having that problem in my tiny house. It's kind of a pain. I right? have I have a uh, grow watt, and it has to be mounted yeah. vertically. Yeah. Same thing. So you know, when you have two options in a project, you can either mount close to this, close to the wall, and high, and I choose to kind of still mount close to the wall, but low. And there are you massive, dude. That's a yeah. lot of bat. That's, yeah, are those three fifteens so, each? Uh, 320. So, 320 each. so all of our projects begin with a 320 amp hour battery, and from there you can kind of you can double that capacity. You can move to a 24 volt, like I'm doing in one of the projects down the row, um, and that's to you know to power a much larger accessory, that, which we'll talk about eventually. Yeah, we will yeah, get we'll, there. We'll eventually. cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, a, a fantastic company. What I love about Lithionics, you know, is as as a professional, they require you that you sign something saying. I, I promise to, to follow this wiring diagram to make sure that when I install this product that will that will work at peak efficacy and that I will it will do what it needs to. Everybody might be thinking to themselves like why is he using 640 amp hours mm -hmm. which is a big system for such a simple van right? Yeah. Like you got that guy right up there which is your air conditioning. Exactly unit. and that's the key is the foundation of a project like this is really how can we create an environment that's you know three three things and that's effective and it's safe and it keeps you comfortable and you know, and if he ever gets a dog or for his kids, you know, he can kind of create an environment that's safe and secure on the hottest days and know that he can plug in his accessories, he can run the AC and know that he has no issues. All, all vans that I build have three sources of power. So the first and the most simple is just solar. So we always use walkable solar arrays above the van. Uh, we're currently using um, Sunflare Explorer panels. They're fantastic. Uh, the second source of charging is shore power. Very, very common, plug outside clip in and turns AC into direct current. Um, and the third source is a dedicated second alternator by Nations Alternators, which is also standard in every project we do. Up to 280 amps of charging to What's your battery. What's in this one? The, yeah. the three belt, so 280 amps. Oh, this is a two, this, so pretty much that, running, just running your vehicle, driving around, it'll charge these batteries. If my math is correct, a little over two hours? Yeah, like two and a half hours. Something like that, two and a half hours? Yeah, because yeah. it's rare to see peak efficiency, but yeah, that's insane. That's It's ridiculous. It's incredible. Yeah. We're going to now segue into probably the coolest thing I've ever seen in a van. I don't th I don't think I've seen it. Have you seen it? It's rare. It's, it's rare? very, very rare. I've never seen it in a van. I've never stepped in a van that has it. What the heck did you do here? Yeah, so Van Compass, a fantastic company, they make this wheel well storage compartment and so we we take the spare we move it elsewhere because it's so big it's silly to have it underneath instead of just leaving this empty space where traditionally in my vehicles is the freshwater tank underneath the van here is basically a giant bathtub so we take the low roof and now we turn it into a high roof that so is so cool he has the option to to shower we've got his aqua shower right here so that he can clip right in use the shower or, or even just if he's fishing salt water Wash mm -hmm. off from the He can water. wash up all his stuff. He's got his Max Air fan, L track up high, so he can just simply clip, clip his waders, clip things to drip dry down in, hose it off. But I mean, what's beautiful? It's a low roof. It's a low roof. Like you I'm not that tall, but still, now instantly, I've got so much room. And you stand in there perfectly. You're fine. Yeah. Oh, it's great. I mean, do you know the weight capacity of what you're standing in? Um, I don't, but it's it's like 
It's you and I. We can stand. I mean, let's put it this way. I'm fine. I'm a solid. 50 pounds heavier than you. Yeah, you're, and I was you're standing husky. in there. Yeah, you're husky. No drama. <laughs> and I was I was standing there, no issues. Yep. Uh, I wasn't jumping around, but I was standing in there. No, so. and you can, and that's what's so amazing about it. Like the van Look is moving. This is solid. Um, technically, he could put ice in there, put fish on ice. Oh heck yeah. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Oh, he'd be the most popular guy at any party. Any party. Yeah. Are uh, you gonna you want to show me some of the outside components? Sure. Let's do it. Who said? Who just say make that make that van compass? Uh, yes. That's pretty cool. All right, so now you went with tried and true. Owl, owl rig setups. Yeah, right? Owl van's great. You know, kind of the the silver standard for exterior components. Um, and silver standard. Yeah, I, I use Agile. I use Agile often. Okay, my I love it. Yeah. Typically. I mean, hey. But uh, but because we use such large tires here, I do like how the Owl has this kind of this step, so you can take it off and then still be able to kind of like pull it off. Versus the Agile, it kind of hooks into the bolt holes here. So it's a little more awkward to get out without possibly stripping those studs. The big old storage box right here. I always love to integrate the storage boxes into the back of a project. We've got DEF fluid if it's a diesel. We've got other volatile chemicals we really don't want in the van. Right. So keeping it exterior is fantastic. It's a nice box though. Oh, it's killer. These are the, the rod holders. Yeah, the so we've got three rod holders on both sides. So this was something he mentioned is very, very common. Um, in, in his industry is, you know, you're, you're at one location, you want to move to the next, you don't want to have to break everything down, you just chuck them in here, drive to the next spot, and then they'll come right out. And so I've got three on this side, three on the other. Oh, that's BA. Yeah, super, super cool. These, these boxes are great. They're, uh, they're made by Backwoods Adventure Mods, rebranded by Owl. Okay. Uh, speaking of Backwood Adventure Mods. Yeah, we've uh, got the Backwoods we, bumpers, both the bumpers. on the front and the rear. Uh, they're really, really incredible options. Something that you're going to find when you're driving to New York City you don't really see elsewhere is everyone's got these like big flat bumpers, like uh -huh. these rubber bumpers on the front and the rear of their cars because everyone kind of parallel parks like into you. It's hilarious. So I want to make sure that we're setting him up for success, creating a vehicle that is just basically going to be bulletproof. Solid steel bumper, that'll do it. Exactly. These are incredible. I mean, if he wants to cook outside, he's got the awning. Yeah. Yeah, we've got the Fiamma awning, pretty pretty standard in all our projects. The backland steps, these are a really, really great step. We kind of chose this specifically because it drops so much lower than the average side step. So yeah, because we've lifted this so much to give him that, you know, blow your kids away when you pick them up at high school look, I wanted to make sure it was pretty easy to get in and out. Did you say the lift on it or what Not is yet. the lift? No, so, so the lift, this is, was kind of a rarity for us. We're traditionally, you know, agile ride improvement package, you know, fanatics here. But this was the, uh, the Van Compass um, 6.3. So the difference between the 6.3 and the 4.3, the two most popular kits that folks install, the 4.3 is just, you know, the suspension upgrade, the Falcon Shock, but then the 6.3 adds a lift to it. So you yeah. increase the height of the body itself while also upgrading the suspension. A very, very nice suspension. One of their top tier suspensions mm -hmm. kits. Exactly. Oh, you got to go with the Black Rhinos. Yeah, I mean, I, basically like between Method and Black Rhino, like, I don't think anyone else even makes wheels in that spacing pattern, truthfully. That's so nice. You line all of your, mm -hmm. your guards and your hood. And yeah, yeah, we use bed liner on, on all the exterior plastics. We do both the, the backside and the front side, creating kind of a full envelope with no edges that are prone to peeling. Uh, we've got the Pathfinder lighting package, kind of sticking with like the Backwoods theme of like Backfinder and Pathfinder. Backwoods and Pathfinder are very, very interconnected, so yeah. it's kind of fun to use their lights in this project. You got Ultimate to. get out of everything, worn winch. Exactly, yeah, yeah, a 10, 10 ton winch, so making sure that he can either get himself out or help out a homie if need be. And look at this thing. Yeah, the Bravo snorkel, so another standard on every project we do. Um, there's so much misinformation about snorkels, it's hilarious, we've, <laughs> we've, we've beaten the horse to death, but kind of the summary, right? The air intake is right here for the engine. We put lights in front of it, we put bumpers. They look great, but we're blocking that air intake. So by moving it up high, we're increasing airflow beyond stock capacity to the engine. We're also moving it high so that it's cleaner. It's not dusty, it's not sandy, it's not snowy. So we're increasing the lifespan of the engine, we're increasing the lifespan of that air filter and increasing sex appeal. Yeah, sure. I mean, it looks sexy yeah. as all hell. Oh, it's, it's great. But you're I saying it's it. obviously better for the engine because the air intake mm -hmm. literally goes down that tube and back in that yeah, way? Yeah, so we relocate. It used to be right here. We just take a huge, like, you know, hose and attach it right to here. We drill a huge hole right here. It's kind of terrifying. Well, in the engine bay, it's like a football-shaped hole for these oh. newer snorkels, and there's two holes. It's a dual-wall engine bay, so there's the hole on the inside, hole on the outside, and you got to cut both to line up. We've kind of integrated tanner racks into a lot of our more recent projects. We've got the Tanner side ladder as well as the Tanner um, roof rack up high. So again, all our projects are walkable, walkable solar, walkable storage options up high. We had to do a little bit of creativity down here to integrate the Tanner and the backland steps together 
And behind you, you have a, uh, a very massive upgrade to the Explosion oh, yeah. van. It's our, it's our new Ben pack lift we're putting in. Uh, we just became certified by Agile Off-Road to do the rear locking differential. I actually install. saw that on your Instagram. You, yeah. uh, you sent a, one of your colleagues out there, one of your, one of your main guys. Yeah, so, so my partner, Mike, is um, he kind of makes up for my lack of the mechanical knowledge of the suspension by coming in and doing that work for me, <laughs> and it's incredible. He was certified by Agile to do that install, so I think we are the only installer east of, I think, western Colorado oh, certified wow. to do that install. So uh, we're gonna finish this out, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, is there any words of wisdom that, that uh, Nick would like to give before parting ways with Bigfoot? This van is gonna be delivered in the next couple of days. It is, yeah, it's gonna be gone and passed off. It's gonna be great. Can't wait to see your next your next vans that are coming up. But. Yeah, we've got a lot of vans coming down the pipeline, a lot of exciting projects. So it'll be fun to kind of share those with the world in the coming months. And now you're my neighbor. Yes, we are. Or I'm, I'm your neighbor. I moved in next to you. Yeah. Uh, if anybody needs any uh, assistance with anything, uh, well, I don't know, what do you, do you offer? You don't offer really much other than really. full builds? No, we, at this point I've focused just on full builds. Um, there's kind of no excuse for us not to be able to make kind of the best vans in the industry out of the shop now and want to try to Part There's not many, uh, not many really, really nice CNCs up in the Northeast though. So if anybody needs some CNC cutting. All right guys, we'll see you guys later. See ya.